In this question, there's a pulley with a chain. You're pulling on the chain with a force of 50 newtons, and you're asked to find what is the final angular velocity after a rotation of 90 degrees, assuming everything starts from rest. So again, this is a work energy problem. So we're going to define two states, the initial state and the final state. The initial state is when the um, chain is in the initial position with zero velocity. And then there's a final state when the chain is moving uh, and uh, the pulley is rotating. So that's going to be called state two. And we're going to calculate all of the energies, so kinetic and potential, and also add the work between these two states that you put into the system. We're going to equate them and then solve for whatever unknown we need. Okay, so we're going to start with um, state number one. And with state number one, this is shown in the um, diagram to the left. We have um, LB and LA, so two different length chains on the right and left side. And the force FA is applied to the left side at A. Um, and so everything, the whole system will rotate um, like this. And um, in the second state, um, this chain here, I'll draw this in, in red, um, this chain here will become longer, so it will uh, extend a bit longer. So this is the change in length of this chain. And this chain here will get shorter. Um, so this is going to be the other chain. Okay, and so this is going to be LA2, and this is going to be LB2. Um, whereas um, whatever is drawn in the picture is going to be LA1 and LB1, so at time 1. So at everything at time 1 will be um, equal to um, the initial state with zero velocity. At time 2, we have omega, we have the chains moving, um, and these lengths will be um, different, will be short, longer on the left side and shorter on the right side. Actually, this will extend all the way up to here. Okay, so, um, and I'll draw arrows over here as well. So let's analyze the system. Um, so we're going to start with uh, state number one. Um, so that's the everything drawn in black. Um, and we have the potential energy um, of uh, the two chains. And then, well, that's essentially it. There is no kinetic energy because nothing is moving. Everything is starting from rest. Okay, so we have um, T1 equals to zero. And then we have V1 is going to be equal to the potential energy of the two chains. So we have, we're going to start with the chain on the left. And the chain on the left is going to, be, uh, is going to have um, the following potential energy. Um, well, first of all, we're going to set our datum, and our datum will be um, this um, starting from the pivot. So um, everything downwards um, we will define as negative, but we'll see that it doesn't really matter. Okay, so V1 is going to be negative. Um, the mass per unit length of the spring, which we'll call kilogram per meter, but this is essentially what we're given in the question, this 3.4 kilograms per meter, the mass per unit length of, of a chain, times the length of the chain on the left, which is LA1, um, which again we're given, um, times G, the gravitational constant, um, and then we're going to multiply it by um, LA over 2, and this is again LA1. Okay, so just to break it down, um, this here is the mass, then we have g, and then we have h, mgh. Okay, so this is the, the chain on the left. Then we can do the chain on the right, which is again negative because it's downwards, um, kilograms per meter of the sprint of this um, chain uh, times uh, lb1 times g times LB1 over 2. 
And this is divided by two, remember, because the center of gravity is halfway down the chain. Uh, so this h here is gonna start from our datum and go halfway down because it only goes to the center of gravity. Okay, so that's why we have divided by two. Uh, so then we can plug all of these um, va values that we're given inside. So we have uh, negative 3.4 uh, kilogram per meter um, times LA1, which is um, three meters uh, times 9.81 meters per second squared uh, times three meters divided by two. And I'm gonna go on a new line, minus um, 3.4 kilograms per meter uh, times uh, two meters times 9.81 meters per second squared times uh, two meters divided by two. And so we got a final value of V1 being equal to uh, negative 216.8. Uh, joules. Okay, so now we have our potential energy. We know kinetic energy is zero. Um, so we can move on to state number two. Okay, so state number two is um, the state that we've defined in red. Okay, so this is after the 90 degree rotation. Um, and um, where the, the right chain has gotten shorter and the left chain has gotten longer. So, and then here we also have velocity because the system is rotating um, and moving. So let's start with the potential energy um, and um, let's start with the changing length. So I defined here, um, if this system rotates that way, um, 90 degrees, um, then um, we're going to have uh, this chain getting longer, okay? Um, so this chain will get longer by a set amount, which is um, equal to the angle that is rotating pi over 2 times the radius, okay? And that's essentially going to be, uh, well, that's going to be uh, pi over 10 if you calculate it. So, um, the delta L is, and I'll define it in red here, uh, delta L, which is how much the left chain gets longer by and the right chain gets shorter by. Okay, so this distance here will be delta L also. Delta L. Okay, um, so this delta L here um, will be equal to theta uh, times the radius which is equal to, um, theta is um, 90 degrees, um, so pi over two uh, times the radius, um, which is 0 0.2 meters. And so this is equal to uh, pi over 10. meters. Okay, uh, so this um, this here um, we'll use to calculate the new centers of gravity, um, which is um, on the left side a bit lower than the original one, and um, here it'll be a bit higher than the original one because the chain moved up. And so we can calculate the new potential energies. Okay, so again it's the same exact formula as over here, but these Lengths here will not be LA1 and LB1, it'll be LA2 and LB2. And we define these as LA2 being equal to LA1 plus delta L, and um, LB2 is equal to LB1 minus delta L. Okay, so um, fairly simple. So we have V2. So the potential energy at two being equal to negative uh, kilogram per meter. So again, this is the linear um, uh, density of uh, the um, chain. 
and then we have times LA2 uh, times G times LA2 over 2 minus kilogram per meter of LB2 G times LB2 over 2 okay and if we plug everything in we get the following negative 3.4 kilogram per meter times 3 meters plus pi over 10 meters times 9.81 meters per second squared times 3 meters plus pi over 10 meters over 2 um, and this is the first part of the equation then we have it continues on minus um, 3.4 kilograms per meter times 2 minus pi over 10 meters and this is meters also times 9.81 meters per second squared times uh, 2 meters minus pi over 10 meters over 2. Okay, and if you solve this, we get that B2 is equal to negative 230.6 joules. Okay, um, so again, this is um, the potential energy at state 2. Now we can calculate the um, kinetic energy, so T. So T2 is going to be equal it's going to depend on omega, okay? And since there's no slipping, omega can also give us the linear velocity of the two chains that are hanging, okay? So there's going to be three terms to this, um, to the kinetic energy. The first term is going to be due to, uh, the, from the rotation, the energy stored in the rotation of the uh, pulley. So that's going to be one half I omega squared, and this is I of the pulley. Okay, um, then there's going to be a term from the translation of chain A, which is one half m uh, a v a squared, and then from chain B, one half m b v b squared. Okay, so first we need to calculate I, which is the inertia of that pulley which is just equal to one half m r squared, which is equal to one half times 20 kilograms times 0 0.2 meters squared, which is equal to 0 0.4 uh, kilograms meters squared. Okay, so now we have I. Um, we don't have omega, but again, we're solving for omega. Now we need to figure out VA and VB. And since they're attached to the same pulley, they're going to have the same velocity. So VA um, is going to be equal to VB. And this is also going to be equal to omega cross product um, to R. But since omega and R are perpendicular, we can just simplify it to omega times R. Uh, and omega is going to be our unknown. R, we know. So if we plug this into VA and VB, this whole equation becomes in terms of omega, and everything else is known. Okay, and since we're trying to solve for omega, that's that's what we're looking for. So we can solve for T2 being equal to one half times 0 0.4 kilograms meters squared times omega squared plus one half times MA uh, and MA is going to be equal to um, the linear mass density of kilograms per meter, so 3.4 kilograms per meter times LA, um, and this is again at the second instance, so we have to add that um, pi over 10, okay? Um, so this is 3 meters plus pi over 10 meters, um, and um, that's our, well, that's our 
mass because we have a linear density times a length which get, just gives us the kilograms uh, and then we have VA which is omega times R which is um, 0 0.2 meters okay and then we have our last term which is the I'll continue on to the next line plus one half times 3.4 kilograms per meter. This time we have the right side, so it's 2 meters minus pi over 10 meters times omega times 0 0.2 meters. So this is our total uh, kinetic energy. Um, and, oh, I forgot to mention uh, this here squared, and this here is squared. Okay? Um, and with this, we can solve and simplify this equation in terms of omega squared. Um, so T2 is equal to 0 0.54 omega squared. Okay, um, and so this really simplifies our equation. And this is just grouping all of these uh, omega squared terms together and plugging these numbers into a calculator and adding them. Okay, so now uh, we have our um, we have potential and kinetic energy at all of the states. So let me highlight them. Uh, so we have uh, potential energy at state two, um, and we have our kinetic energy at state two. Then we have our potential energy at state one and our kinetic energy at state one. Okay. So when we add them all together, um, they should equal, and we also should add the work that we've added uh, into the system. So T1 uh, plus V1 plus the work from 1 to 2 should equal to T2 plus V2. Okay, and um, this is, we can just plug everything in. Um, the work that we haven't really calculated is just from a force, a non-conservative force, um, which is just equal to the force times the distance that force travels. Um, so the force is equal to 50 newtons, and the distance that it travels is just that um, pi over 10, right? That delta L, pi over 10 meters, um, because that force essentially travels um, this little distance over here. So it starts from here and it ends up here. So it travels that delta L. Okay, so pi over 10 meters. Uh, and if we put everything together, we get the following. 0 minus 216.8 uh, joules plus um, 50 newtons times pi over 10 meters is equal to uh, 0 0.54 omega squared uh, minus 230.6 joules. And if we solve for omega squared, we get that um, omega is equal to 7.4 uh, radians per second. And this is the final answer.